everyone, I'm Andrea from the Firebase team. And today we're going to look at how to get started with real-time database on web. Why would you want to use real-time database in the first place? Well, you can use it to store and sync data using a NoSQL Cloud database. Data is stored as JSON, synced across all clients in near real time, and remains available when your app goes offline. The best part of all this is it can be done with just a few lines of code and Firebase manages the infrastructure of the database system so you don't have to spend time worrying about building, maintaining, and hosting your own database. With that, let's go ahead and see how we would do this. There are many ways to include a library in a web app, but in this video, we'll be using NPM and Webpack. If you want more information on how to set that up with Firebase, check out this other Firebase fundamental video. Let's get started. First off, Let's go to Firebase console and navigate to real-time database. Clicking on Create Database will open a window where we'll pick the location for a real-time database. The default is usually fine, as it's the project's default Google Cloud Platform resource location. If you're not able to pick a location, then your project already has a default GCP resource location that will set either during project creation or when setting up another service like storage that requires a location setting. We can then click Next to pick our security rules. The default security rules deny all reads and writes from our apps, which probably wouldn't be very helpful right now since we wouldn't be able to change the database at all. So we can go ahead and choose to start in test mode so we can actually write data to our database. And we can come back to update these security rules when we're ready. Then click Enable here, which will then show our empty database. What are we seeing here exactly? Well, to understand what this is, we'll have to talk a bit about how real-time database stores data. The TLDR is that it's a JSON tree, and when you add data to the JSON tree, it becomes a node in the existing JSON structure with an associated key. You can provide your own keys like user IDs or semantic names, or Firebase can generate them for you. What we see here in the console is the root of the tree, and when we add data to it, we'll see the tree-like structure grow from here, as we'll see in a bit. Even though this is a tree, and real-time database does allow nesting of data up to 32 levels deep, when you fetch data at a location in the database, you retrieve all of its children nodes. So if you have a deeply nested tree, this might slow down the user as they'll have to wait to get and parse through all of this data. On top of that, granting read and write access at a node grants access to all the data under that node, which might not actually be what you want. So in practice, keeping this data structure as flat as possible will probably be helpful. Now that we know how data is stored in the real-time database, we're ready to take a look at some code. Here, I'm in my editor and starting from the same starter code you'll have at the end of our setup video linked in the description. Following that video involves installing Firebase with NPM, which means you'll have real-time database ready to use as well. So now in our entry point file index.js, we can initialize a Firebase app after grabbing the configuration information from our Firebase project in the console. Next, we'll have to get the instance of real-time database, which is used to read and write data. Every Firebase subpackage has a getter function that retrieves an instance of a service, like real-time database in this case. As a side note, don't worry about calling this getDatabase function multiple times, as it returns the same instance when you call it with the Firebase app. Now, let's see how we can write and read data from real-time database. We'll first have to create a reference to a path, which is where in the database we'll read and write data, and we'll use the ref function to do this. The first argument is the database instance that we already got from above. And the second argument is the path at which we want to interact with the data. For example, let's say we're creating a social exercise tracking app. And for it, we'll probably have to add users. We'll call the ref with db, then pass in the path, users slash plus whatever the user's ID is. To write to the database, we'll use set to save data to that reference. And if there's already data existing at that path, the former data will get replaced. Using the same reference example above for adding users to our social exercise tracking app, we'll call set 
with a reference to add a user to the database. Once we call the write user data function, we can see here in Firebase console that there is now this new entry. If we call that function again with all of the same parameters except for a different email, the original email address for the given user ID would be replaced with a new email, as we can see here in the console as well. Now that we know how to write data, how do we get that data? Let's say we want to get the total distance a user has run. We'll first get the reference to the data, then use on value to observe events. On value will get triggered once when the listener is attached, and again every time the data, including children data, changes. The listener receives a snapshot that contains the data at the specified path in the database at the time of the event, and we can get the value in the snapshot with the val method. This on value event is helpful for syncing the entire app's state since it returns all of the data at the reference. Often in our apps, we need to use lists. And a question that comes to mind is, what happens if I have a five item list and for whatever reason, two devices randomly both decide to add a sixth item at the same time? Well, we can use Firebase's push function, which generates a unique key every time a child is added to the specified Firebase reference. This way, we're not trying to add an item at a particular index in the list, which may result in an overwrite. If device A adds to index 6, then device B does the same thing. By using these auto-generated unique keys for each new element in the list, several clients can add children to the same location at the same time without write conflicts. Each key generated by push is based on a timestamp so list items are automatically ordered chronologically. For example, push could be used to add a new post to a list of comments to workouts in our app. Now, how do we get that list of comments? Before, we talked about how to get data at a specific reference, but that data wasn't a list. We can again use onValue, but instead of using the val function on the snapshot, we'll iterate through the snapshot, which returns the entire list of data. For each item in the snapshot, we'll get the corresponding value using the val function. Sometimes, though, we don't want to process the entire list. And in fact, we probably don't want to do that most of the time because it's getting a lot of data. We likely care more about the changes happening in that list. So let's listen to child events instead. These are triggered in response to specific operations that happen to the children of a node from an operation, such as when a new child node is added to the path. There are some events we can listen for, and each of these together can be useful for listening to changes to a specific node in a database. For example, in our social exercise tracking app, we might use these methods together to monitor activity in the comments of a workout. OnChild added retrieves a list of items or listens to additions to a list of items. And this event is triggered once for each existing child, and then again every time a new child is added to the specified path. The listeners passed a snapshot with a new child's data, so in this case, we'll get any added comments for our post. OnChild changed listens for changes to the items in the list. And this event is triggered any time a child node is modified, including any modifications to descendants of the child node. The snapshot passed to the event listener contains the updated data for the child. In our example, this will get triggered whenever a comment is modified, and we'll be able to see the modified text. OnChild removed listens for items being removed from a list, and this event is triggered when an immediate child is removed. The snapshot passed to the event listener contains data for our removed child. So in our example, this will get called when a comment gets deleted, and we'll be able to see what was deleted. To make all of this much simpler, there are open source libraries for popular web frameworks to use real-time database more easily, AngularFire, ReactFire, and ViewFire. So that's it. We can use real-time database to store and sync data as JSON. And this data is synced across all clients in real time and remains available when your app goes offline. 
The real-time database JavaScript SDK is open source on GitHub, so check that out. And there are more Firebase Fundamentals videos if you enjoyed this one. Happy coding. <laughs>